tell us a little bit about what you were talking about with uh, with the EPA and what's going on with the lake. Okay. I found out uh, on Monday of this week uh, from an e a email from the Lake Area Chamber that uh, we have been placed on a uh, EPA list, uh, 303D list of impaired waterways. And starting on December the 7th, a 60 day comment period for the public began in relation to this. And I just want the public to be aware that this is taking place, that um, I don't know what the consequences of being placed on that list is, but effectively they're saying that we have issues with regard to water quality on the Lake of the Ozarks. And I think that those uh, issues are being greatly exaggerated. Uh, we've got one of the best fishery, fisheries in the central United States. And um, we've got big, really big bass. We've got crappie. We've got walleye on this lake, which are um, a pristine water fish. They are not going to tolerate low quality water. So there's a, there's a disconnect between what's taking place with our fishery and what the EPA is saying with regard to our waterway. And I'm just concerned about where this is going to for the citizens of this county. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this. The, uh, there's this period right now that they're taking the feedback from the public, but what does this ultimately mean? I mean, what, what are they trying to do, I guess, if they figure out one way or the other? Well, unfortunately, if a problem is identified, uh, well then the, obviously with a problem, there's going to be a solution. So if they list us and create a problem, well then there has going to, there's going to have to be a remediation take place of some sort. And once you're placed on the watch, watch list, um, a number of things take place until the, um, uh, the existing situation is corrected. And so we're going to be placed on a watch list and we're going to be monitored and we're going to be have to be taking some sort of remediation steps in relation to how to make our waterway um, meet whatever standards or guidelines that they want when in fact our fishery itself by the type and size and numbers of fish that we have is saying that we're doing a really good job already. I don't believe that we need their help. Now this is something that just kind of came out recently uh, through an email, correct? Is that yeah, and, and it's it's really kind of a, a disappointment that I found out about this through a Chamber of Commerce. It's really surprising me, to me that all this stuff was going on and had been going on for years with no one ever notifying local governments. So I'm, you know, I feel a little bit blindsided by finding this out only after the 60 day period is running. Um. Was there anything that sparked this? Was it just kind of, uh, is this something that just the government, I guess, federally decided to, to do this to, to all these lakes or is it? Oh gosh, you know, you know uh, this, is, this is kind of stepping into the woods, but um, you know, a few years back um, under another administration, uh, they basically expanded the waters of the United States that used to be just the rivers to anything that runs into the rivers. Uh, and effectively they were saying we have rights over the rain that falls onto your ground to decide how that is handled on your ground and uh, under the previous administration if even if you had a 200 acre farm if you wanted to put a culvert on a roadway in the middle of your farm you had to get an EPA permit on it or you would be fined. So that's a huge change from the way things were in the past um, and it just seems to me like the federal government just keeps reaching further and further into individual and state's rights with regard to your record title, your land you own. How far are they gonna go until the desirability of actually being the owner of a piece of property is, is so poor that why buy it? And, and you know we've got an incredible fishery here at the Lake of the Ozarks, and I just hate to see our citizens be saddled with a, a bunch of remediation stuff on our lake when we're doing just fine handling it right now ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we, we um, I don't know how, I don't know if qualified is the, the right thing to ask you or not, but um, with the sewer systems, it's kind of, that comes up with the lake. 
um, is that have something to do with this? With, with I guess just the way that the city's being built, and obviously more and more population, we're going to have issues with the runoff and. You know, but but and, and that may be the case, uh, and we don't know what the distant future holds. But right now in Camden County, we have Camden County wastewater, and um, obviously the Department of Natural Resources regulates all the central sewage systems on the Lake of the Ozarks, and they're doing a really good job of controlling those central sewer systems. We do have a lot of areas that are just septic tanks, but. Keep in mind, everywhere that there are septic tanks, each time that one of these homes sells, uh, there's almost always a requirement for a sewer inspection before the home closes. And there's no telling how many thousands of those things have not passed an inspection and have had to be corrected over the course of the last 10 or 15 years. So it's not like we're not doing a job. Every time a home sells, it has to pass a test and we're having a lot of them fixed now. The water quality, I can tell you, on Lake of the Ozarks is a lot better than it was in the 1970s. Yeah, I mean, it's um, just being a naturalist out here, the, the, it, it, people come from all over the world. All over the world. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's surprising to hear this information uh, when you said that yesterday, but, um, and, there, and there is, a, a very uh, the community is very uh, conscious of of what we do, our actions. We're not just yes. we, we're very conscious of keeping this lake clean. We all so it's, love it. It's, yeah, it's it's, an, it's a very interesting that I mean I could see from a federal level how we could get lumped into that. But um, can you talk about some of those things? Like you said, 1970s it was a little dirtier. There's been, a, I mean, I can, I know a lot of things that have improved, but, but can you just kind of yeah. tip on or talk about that a little bit? I, you know, I've obviously, I've been uh, on this lake for all of my life and I've been sur a surveyor here s since the early 1970s. And I can just tell you that um, in the early 1970s, our lake was no doubt uh, not as clean as it is today. And, and a lot of these like algae blooms, I can remember back in, in the set early 70s, there were certain coves on Horseshoe Bend and places like that where no homes had been constructed yet. And yet in the summertime, whenever it would get really hot, typically August and stuff like that, you would have algae blooms even in the 1970s. A lot has been done at the Lake of the Ozarks since the 70s to put in central sewer systems throughout the, the Lake of the Ozarks and deal with the areas where septic systems were not functioning properly to fix them. Uh, we're making huge strides. And I just, uh, what I'm concerned about is uh, them coming up with some unreal, unrealistic standards for water quality that actually exceed what is necessary for us to have a thriving eco ecosystem. And when you see the size of the bass, the size of the crappie, the size of the walleye, the, the numbers of bluegill that are on this lake, it's speaking to the quality of our water right now. And, and quite frankly, you can just look out in the back, background right now and you can see this is not some dead waterway. This is a thriving ecosystem that's really doing good. And I'm really concerned about um, where they want to go with these regulations and are their standards even realistic? I am relatively certain that the water quality standards that we have right now on this Lake of the Ozarks are better than they were 200 years ago when all the people weren't here and we had 60 million buffalo uh, running across the drainage basin of the Osage River bottom and the Niangle River bottom. All that stuff would flow through here um, and there was no treatment whatsoever at the time, uh, just say in, in the 1820s. Where can people, I guess uh, we were talking about where they can, for public comment right now. Right. It's this, uh, yeah, the 60 day period for public comment is running and you could actually uh, uh, go look at the Missouri Department of Natural Resources site uh, or you can just do a Google search and you'll find it. Uh, it's the 303D list of impaired waterways for the state of Missouri. 
uh, it'll take you right to it. And there's a the, then you, there's a tab you can click on uh, that shows for public comment. So just go on that and put your public comment. I'm I am recommending that everyone get on there and begin to speak loudly right now with regard to this uh, list that they're wanting to put us on. I think it's unfair to have us um, under this classification when we're doing a real good job of keeping our lake clean.